You've probably never heard of this tiny Russian Republic that lies along the Caspian Sea, but in the world of combat sports, it's a leading superpower. Still undisputed! Khabib Nurmagomedov! You might have heard the name of the most popular mixed martial arts fighter from Dagestan, Habib Nurmagomedov, who beat Irish champion Conor McGregor in 2020 and firmly put Dagestan on the MMA map. But Habib is just the tip of the iceberg. Over the past decade, the Republic of Dagestan has become a modern-day fight factory, producing highly competitive athletes that are dominating some of the world's most prestigious combat sports like wrestling and MMA. The gym reeks of men's sweat. I've always wanted to find out what makes Dagestan, a relatively small and poor region of nearly 3 million people, such a powerhouse in producing world-class fighters. Luckily, I met this guy, a promising 26-year-old MMA fighter from Dagestan, Uzair Abdurakov. And even though my back still hurts a bit, I have no regrets about spending a week with Uzair, as I paid close attention to how he trains, what he eats, and how he motivates himself to become the next superstar in one of the world's most brutal sports. So the fight between Uzair and his opponent has just started and it's a watershed moment for him, for his career. Stay with me to get an inside view on what's it like to be an up-and-coming fighter in Dagestan. I first met Uzair in Moscow as he was getting ready for a fight that was of great importance for his career. It's uh, two days before Uzair's bout. Uh, he's actually having uh, a weigh-in ceremony tomorrow. And that means that right now he's going through the most intense part of uh, his weight cutting. I thought this would be practice typical for combat sports. A warm-up, punching on a boxing bag, maybe sparring. I didn't expect to see Uzair lying on a heated treadmill, wrapped up in a sheet and sweating like he was suffering a hellish fever. You're probably wondering why on earth he was doing all this. Well, Uzair had a weigh-in the next day and still needed to lose two kilos, four and a half pounds. But he'd already been on a strict diet for several weeks all he had left to lose was water. <laughs> Before the training session, Uzair rubbed himself with a special cream that expands skin pores and makes you sweat even more. <laughs> then he ran on the treadmill for 20 minutes. Then he covered himself in a sheet and lay down for another 20 minutes, basically squeezing the last remaining fluids out of his system. This extreme dehydration is not really healthy, but it's effective. Uzair lost almost 2 kilos in just 40 minutes. What really shocked me was when I saw Uzair the next day, after the weigh-in ceremony. He had gained 7 kilos, over 15 pounds, back overnight. Of course, he tried to minimize the hit his body was taking by drinking water and eating light, healthy food like dates and berries. But every extreme drop in weight is a huge blow to one's health. Before we get to Uzair's bout, let's travel to Dagestan, where he and hundreds of other young athletes cut their teeth in professional fighting. We're driving to meet with an up-and-coming MMA fighter, Uzair Abdurakov. He was born in the area close to the city of uh, Hasavyurt in Dagestan, which is a relatively small town of 140,000 people, but 
It has six Olympic uh, champions and medalists in uh, wrestling. So this concentration of uh, pretty successful uh, combat sports athletes in this area is, is something else. Zaire invited me to his parents' house. This is where he grew up and got his first taste of Dagestan's super masculine culture that breeds top-notch fighters. Супруг мой сделал для него турник. Я начал ругаться, зачем ему турник нужен, убери этот турник, пусть он учится. Вот я не понимала, что спортом он может достичь большего. This is what a typical barbecue in Uzair's village looks like. First of all, there are only men. These men eat a lot of meat, mostly lamb. There is no alcohol, just water or hot tea. And everyone is catching up on the latest news in the world of combat sports. Самый популярный вид спорта это у нас вольная борьба. Да, здесь очень много олимпийских чемпионов. И вольная борьба, как мы все знаем, что она очень конкурентный вид спорта. В этой компании много мастеров спорта, спортсменов. Здесь человек 10 минимум есть. Здесь есть четверо, пять, а даже есть международники. По какому виду спорта? Разные виды спорта. То есть ММА, тайский бокс, панкратион. See this cheeky boy? I bet he already attends wrestling classes after school, something that almost every boy and young man does in Dagestan. I even visited a remote village high up in the mountains where kids train with stones, braving cold weather and a lack of oxygen. It was so fascinating, I decided to make a separate video about it. Subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. В Дагестане очень сильная конкуренция. Ты даже не представляешь, какая. Ты в какой бы зал не зашел, даже такой не самый такой знаменитый, ты меньше ста человек не увидишь. Вот зал, я, который я хожу, там места не бывает тренироваться. Настолько сильная конкуренция. Там можешь прийти молодой парень 16 лет и так навтыкать профессионалу. У всех молодых глаза горят. Они увидят там одного спортсмена, как выступает. Они все в зал, в зал, в зал, в зал. Узаир took us to a local gym where he used to practice as a kid. I was stunned. It was early in the morning, yet the place was full. С восьми утра зал бывает здесь полный. У нас город очень спортивный. Люди любят спорт, занимаются спортом. Посмотрите, абсолютно с малого начиная до взрослого все с утра пораньше уже спорт зале. Then I asked Uzair to show me a few of his favorite moves. Big mistake. <laughs> that was tough. I like to think that I'm in good shape, yet I felt like a helpless bag of cotton tossed by some kind of killing machine. These athletes are tough. Many times they damage their ears in fights or during practice. Normally you would want to go to hospital and fix it, but here they just take it in their stride. Broken, weirdly shaped ears have become another brutal trademark of Dagestani fighters. Многие выкачивают. Я тоже одно ухо выкачал. Вот это вот выкачал. Я на какое-то уродливое стало. И я вот это не стал выкачивать. Ну, тоже хоть уродливое, но не настолько. А не то, что уродливое, оно бойцовское. Ну, как-то сказать, уродливое, наверное, бойцовское, наверное, для там жителей Дагестана или где развитый этот вид спорта. А там для москвича оно уродливое. I liked the vibe in Uzair's gym, yet I couldn't help but notice the peeling paint on the walls. And the entrance also didn't look fancy. Dagestan is one of Russia's poorest regions and poverty is another driver that pushes young people to fight for money. Habib Nurmagomedov, who is not just a successful MMA fighter, but also a very wealthy man whose face is now on billboards all over Dagestan, as a role model for every boy dreaming of a big fighting career. Видят, как Хабиб материально сейчас себя зарекомендовал. Видят, как бойцы получают какие-то машины, молодые пацаны. Видят, и они не хотят работать за 25-30 тысяч, сидеть в офисе. Простой парень из, из Дагестана может выйти на такой уровень, что может вопрос решать на любом уровне. But money doesn't come easy. First, you need to sign a contract with a fighting league. And being a good fighter sometimes is not enough. You need to win over the crowd. It's actually common to have two weigh-ins 
uh, before a bout in MMA. Uh, the first one is where they uh, check precisely how much fighters weigh, uh, are they eligible to compete in their categories. And then there is this, uh, a uh, face-off where uh, two fighters come together for the final stare down. Now let's check out what uh, Uzair and his opponent have in store for each other. Увидел, что у каждого бойца этого есть какой-то образ, какой-то выход, какое-то яркое выступление, понял? Когда я это понял, я начал уже так как-то открыто вести, говорить, как есть, на камеру, как есть, говорить там. Thanks to his fighting skills and charisma, Uzair caught the eye of Shamil Zavorov, president of the Eagle FC, Russia's most prestigious MMA league launched by Habib Nurmagomedov in 2020. Ну, хорошим бойцом и хорошим шоуменом. Он знает, и как Узаир появился в лиге, он с первого турнира он начал себя как-то проявлять, знаешь, как, как вот как у него есть амбиции чемпионские. Он там ну, заряжен постоянно на бой. To get to the top, Uzair has to work hard, both during practice, building up strength, and after it, building a vast and loyal audience on social media. И как только я начал Инстаграм вести, у меня начала аудитория расти, как-то узнавать начали, как-то относиться. Вот даже как я только Инстаграм начал вести, на арене полностью трибуны почти мои болельщики были. У меня хоть какой-то не какой-то заработок там бывает иногда, за рекламу там или что-то еще. Я практически уже в магазинах не одеваюсь, не отправляюсь за бартером. Все, я историю одел, закинул, как я ее одеваю, и все, форма твоя. Да, им реклама, тебе одежда. Among the very first things that Uzair does after every fight, even before he takes off the gloves, is to record a short video for social media. He's also been trying it in English, but speaking foreign languages doesn't come easy, especially after exhausting fights. Habib, I want to fight in Miami and King of uh, 65, King... No, 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 давай еще раз, 165. 165, Kevin, да. in Miami, King of you and you will... And I'm coming for you and I will smash you. С каждым боем, с каждым выигрышным боем у каждого бойца гонорар поднимается. Поэтому каждый раз, каждый бой выигрывает, каждый он по ступеньке поднимается, он начинает зарабатывать больше. Я же говорю, у него появляются спонсоры, у него появляются какие-то партнеры, там рекламные какие-то, там у него раскручивается Инстаграм, он там начинает зарабатывать. So we're inside the sports arena where uh, was there is about uh, about to take place uh, in a few hours. Uh, this is a place where uh, the fighters get ready, warm up before the fight. Um, so. It is a very important day for Uzair and both uh, for his career. There's a lot at stake, uh, including the signing of a new contract. Uh, the old one, by the way, expires after tonight's fight. <laughs> Когда победил, забрался на клетку. Это спонтанное было решение. Ты не помнишь, когда я весь гонял, я тренировал это. Как я буду залезать туда? Не, не спонтанно. Я просто поднялся, показал, увидел всех своих знакомых, всех близких, а там была вся арена. The few minutes immediately after a fight are crucial. A winner comes under the spotlight and has everyone's undivided attention for a short time. Was I knows this? and cuts to the chase. And 
he gets a contract. A good one. The next day after the fight, Uzaid flies back home. He throws a barbecue for all his friends and relatives who gave him money and support when he was broke and his fighting future was still uncertain. Я на эти тысячи рублей как-то планировал свой месяц. Или, грубо говоря, я экономить научился. А экономия, это знаешь, там, если ты где-то сэкономишь, где-то можешь там выиграть, да? Ру, копейка рубль бережет. Я вот сидел там, ну, например, супруге говорил, скоро все поменяется. Она практически 2-3 года меня там на сборы, она все меня кормила. Я говорю, скоро все поменяется, скоро все. И как только я Иглс FC подписался, тогда еще EFC было. Первый бой у меня был гонорар там 50 плюс 50, там вообще, это первый гонорар, который я получил нормальный такой, 100 тысяч рублей. Узаир took a sports bike he bought on his first big money and went on a ride around the village. Frankly, I was a bit jealous of Uzair in a good way. There was nothing like this feeling when you worked really hard, sweated your guts out, sacrificed, but came out on top. It's very rewarding. Молодым бойцам посоветую, если у вас что-то в жизни не получается, то вы не останавливайтесь на эти, идите, верьте, верьте в себя, верьте в свои силы, у вас все получится.